Right, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's 9.30. Um, I am in Cambridge in the UK, uh, hence the fact that it's raining here rather than my usual dry, dry desert environment of Lima. Um, we managed to escape South America and return to um, the UK um, despite what's going on. So uh, I'm quite relieved to be back in Europe. Um, I am just uh, going to share my screen uh, and show you the presentation in front of you. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to be spending an hour or so talking about um, about the new course in a little little bit of detail, but I've already given a webinar on the new course. Uh, I've also given a, a webinar on the new forms of assessment, the, the new essay uh, and the exhibition. So there's actually plenty of material already on the site about the new course. Um, I'm going to focus today on how we are going to be supporting the new course. Um, I'm going to be just giving a tour of the site, showing you all of the new materials, all of the new resources that we're adding to the site. Um, there's so much stuff on the, on the site now that it's, it, it can be quite hard to navigate and find your way around. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be showing you how how to, to get from place to place. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the free content on the site and the members only content. Uh, so this webinar not only functions as a way of, of, uh, of kind of giving an outline of the new course, but also of giving a sort of orientation session uh, on the website for everyone who uses it, um, showing you hopefully how you can um, use it just to deliver a great experience um, for your students. So this webinar will last for about an hour. Um, there's no point in me saying this, but I'll say it anyway. If you're not able to see this live, there is a recording. Uh, but if you're not seeing it live, you're not watching right now. So you're watching a recording. So I don't need to say that. Um, so this is what we'll look at. Um, first of all, I'll just give a little introduction to the webinar. Um, secondly, I want to always keep this in mind. Um, our aims for TOK, my aims for TOK, hopefully they align to your aims for TOK. They're, they're, I'm talking here about what we're trying to do as educators. Um, and hopefully this will resonate with you and what you try to do in your TOK classes. Uh, then in uh, part three, I'll just quickly go over uh, the new course, um, the new structure. Um, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we'll look very quickly at the new forms of assessment. Just a few reminders. Um, then I will be kind of focusing mostly on how our approach, uh, which is the big question framework, um, is really the answer to all our problems in TOK and how it's, how we've adapted it slightly for the new syllabus, um, but how it still works, uh, I, I think fantastically well, um, for TOK. Um, I'll mention the other huge element of, uh, theoryofknowledge.net, which is the TOK newsletter. Um, and then look at two of the other resources that we've put on the site over the last 12 months. First of all, uh, our tool for integrating the diploma program. Uh, and secondly, this enormous uh, resource that's kind of grown beyond my control completely uh, called the Knowledge Lexicon, which grows kind of every single day. I'd like to just remind you, uh, if I may, despite what's going on in the world right now, uh, about uh, the school visits that I offer for TOK, um, which have now gotten a little bit easier for, for, for most schools, I think, um, because I'm back in Europe and it's much easier for me to, to visit. Uh, finally, uh, you can give up after that, but finally, how to join us. Um, very, very easy to, to become a member of theoryofknowledge.net and I will, I, will, I will show you how to do that. But hopefully this will also be a useful webinar for the free users of the site, people who, who um, don't pay for, for, for membership, um, which is great. We, we, we have designed the site so it can be used uh, by people who haven't um, joined us. Uh, and I hope that you will find loads and loads of content on the site as well. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, uh, as I've said, the, the webinar will last for an hour. Uh, my name is, uh, is Michael Dunn. I uh, created Theory of Knowledge Dot net more than 10 years ago, which is quite scary to consider. Um, it's been going a while now. Um, we've, we've, we've published loads and loads of newsletters. The, the website has changed and reinvented itself and evolved hugely over that time. 
Um, so um, yeah, that's 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 who we are, who I am. Just a little bit of uh, housekeeping about the the webinar. Um, I, I got quite a lot of people out there. I can I can see the numbers, which is fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for in terms of questions and messages, I'm very very happy to um, give you my take on uh, on on your questions, on your queries, on on any um, worries or concerns about the new um, syllabus. Um, but I'd rather you sent those after the webinar. It just gives me more time to to process them, and and I will create a debrief uh, email which I will send out shortly after the event ends. Uh, you'll also have a link to the video recording, uh, and I'll also give you a copy of this uh, presentation so you can kind of see exactly what we have uh, talked about. So that's how I'd like to do it this morning. Um, so let's start with the, with the most important thing. Uh, what, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to do in TOK? Um, well, I have, uh, I, I, I've thought of five key aims. These are not the same as the aims of the actual course. I have, I have four different aims for the actual course that I give to students, but as educators, as people who are involved in this fantastic course, uh, what are we trying to do? Well, you know, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. This is what I try to do in my TOK lessons. Uh, and you can see that I've kind of arranged this in order, and, and I hope you kind of agree with this because maybe this is a little bit controversial. Um, you'll, you'll immediately see the, the small um, writing at the bottom of this, the fifth bullet point. This is in order of importance. I think the, these are the things that we should try to do. These are the things that I try to do. First of all, I wanna, take, I wanna make TOK a life-changing uh, experience for, for the students that I teach and also the, the teachers who I, who I work with. Uh, I want it to be life-changing in an empowering kind of way. Um, when I go into a lesson, knowing that I am challenging the way in which my students think, but obviously not in a negative way, not trying to cut them down to size, but just introducing them to another way of thinking, I get very excited. Uh, and I can't wait to, to introduce them to, to new ideas and new ways of looking at the world because I know what it does to them. They love it. Uh, they love being challenged and they love being invited to question the way that they have looked at the world. And I think this is life changing. I think this is empowering. And those are the best lessons that I ever teach in TOK, the ones that do that to my students. And the students give me their direct feedback uh, and they tell me that this is exactly what happens. So that is my first and most important aim as an educator in general, but, but this is the beauty of TOK. It allows you to do that, I think, better than any other subject, better than any other course. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, second bullet point. <coughs> I think uh, that TOK, again, more than any other course, uh, helps to prepare students um, to become members of this epistemic community. Okay, I've, I've got a, a great, great new lesson that I will be giving to students for the, for the new syllabus, um, which is called the epistemic community. And it's all about belonging to uh, this, this, this community of, of knowers, this community of thinkers. Um, and, and in that lesson, uh, they are invited to think, do I have the right to think whatever I want in whatever way I want? And of course, their initial kind of feeling is, of course I do. We live in a, in, a, in a free society, or most of us live in a free society. We should be allowed to think whatever we want. And then we start to question that. Um, you know, should you be allowed to think anything without any kind of evidence? Should you be allowed to think things that may be harmful to other people? And so on. And, and, and they, they realize that there are certain duties and obligations as a member of an epistemic community. Um, so I, I, I think that that is, uh, is, is a really important aim, um, not, not to think specific things, but to think in a certain way. Um, and, I, and I think that TOK does that better than any other course. Um, I get a huge kick out of introducing students to new ideas and thinkers. Um, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, TOK in itself is, is, a, is a whole kind of uh, liberal arts course. Uh, well, it's more than that, isn't it? But I mean, we, we, we meet so many fantastic philosophers and scientists and writers. Uh, it's just so brilliant. I, I, I love the richness 
of TOK or I, I love how rich the TOK course can be. Um, so that is that is my my third uh, aim for them, just to just to get them engaged, get them hooked up to these fantastic thinkers who have influenced and changed the way that we think about the world, who have made an impact again on that epistemic community. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the last two bullet points, um, a little more specific to the DP. Um, so fourthly, um, you know, you can, you can use whatever, whatever metaphor you want for this. Uh, TOK is the hub of the, of the diploma program. TOK is the, um, as the mechanism whereby everything gets integrated, or as I've put it here, the engine room of the DP, the intellectual engine room of the DP, the thing that gets them thinking about all their other subjects. So, you know, it really is the hub, I think, totally biased, but I think the hub of the, of the DP, uh, the beating heart of the DP, loads of metaphors that you can use for it. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I've tried to set up a course that does that truly. And then finally, of course, we are trying to get them some grades, tick that box. Um, I want them to be able to carry out the final assessment uh, tasks effectively. Um, I think for a number of reasons. I mean, first of all, yes, you, you've got to get those three bonus points or 1.5 bonus points or however you want to calculate it. I want them to be empowered um, and enfranchised by the final assessment tasks rather than turned off and annoyed by those final assessment tasks. So I, I want to equip them with the skills to be able to do that um, really, really well. Uh, I want, dare I say it, for them to actually enjoy these final um, assessment tasks. I, I, I don't think they're perfect. I still don't think they're perfect. Um, I'm yet to see the kind of exhibition in action. I think there's a lot to be said for the exhibition. <coughs> Excuse me, I've, I've said this in, in the other webinar, looking at the assessment tasks. Um, I think it's a shame that it's an individual task. I like the fact that the presentation was done in groups. Um, however, I, 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 I love the way in which the exhibition allows us to kind of make TOK public um, to the entire community, uh, which I think uh, is, is a great way of, of that word empowering, again, that, a way, another way of empowering students. Um, so I want them to enjoy that. I want them to, to get a huge kick out of creating these final assessment tasks. I want them to come up with something that's worthy of the year and a half or so. Uh, of the course. So those are my five aims. I mean, I suppose we can come up with other aims as well, but those are the five most important things that I am trying to do in TOK and that I've based the website and the course and the BQ, uh, BQ lessons and the newsletter, everything is based around that. Okay, all right, so let's have a quick look at the course. Um, so we have um, we've designed this this diagram that you've probably seen. I, I've I've put it on, in quite a few places um, on the website. Um, you're you're obviously welcome to to download it and and stick it on your walls. I mean, I, I know a lot of other people are, are, are probably producing these diagrams now. Um, as I said in one of the other webinars, it took me a long time to figure this out, uh, and I've ended up with quite a simple diagram. Uh, I wanted to show somehow the relationship between the areas of knowledge and the optional themes um, and, and, and the core theme. Um, and I came up with all sorts of complicated arrows and diagrams and flow charts and things, and, 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 and I ended up with this eventually, which is much simpler uh, and which I think the students themselves can 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 use to make sense of the course. Um, you know, they they I think should figure out the links between the different parts of the course. Um, but we've guided them a little bit. Um, so I think the areas of knowledge are, are, are relatively straightforward. Um, I, I see those as the ways in which we categorise um, ideas, concept, knowledge um, in order to to kind of understand and make sense of it. Uh, the areas of knowledge remain um, very similar to the same even as, as the 2015 syllabus. Um, the optional themes I had a problem with actually defining, you know, are we, are we, are we interested in, in knowledge about technology, knowledge about religion, knowledge about indigenous societies, or are, are, we, are we using that as a, as a framework to, to make sense of the areas of knowledge? Um, and I, th I think it's, it's the latter more than the former. Um, you know, how, how do we use uh, technology in order to, to understand the areas of knowledge? How do we use language in order to understand the areas of knowledge? So, so similar to the ways of knowing. However, you know, you, you can see that 
<coughs> excuse me, the, these themes are, are slightly different. Um, you know, relatively few of us belong to an indigenous society. Um, so we can't really say that we ourselves um, understand the areas of knowledge via our own indigenous links because most of us don't have indigenous links. Um, so so that, that, that kind of theme is, is perhaps different to the others. Um, so so uh, I've, I've come up with that kind of definition. I, I see them more as affiliations uh, and I, I think that kind of works. Um, but we are, I think we are also interested to some degree in, in the knowledge within those themes themselves. You know, for example, how does la language change over time? And of course there are close relationships between them, technology and language, um, very, very closely linked. Um, well, all of them, you can make links between all of them. So I, I, that, that's the way I'm wording it. Um, they're the affiliations which affect the way we, we view knowledge um, and um, yeah, on a, on a personal and societal level. Uh, the core theme in the middle is, is kind of um, is how we as as kind of personal knowers. I think it's, it's more of a personal thing that the core theme knowledge and the knower, um, which I will explain in a minute when we come on to look at how the big we use the big uh, question framework to, to make sense of the whole course. Um, so that is that is the that is the new course. Um, now, I, before before this webinar began, I had one or two questions from people. You know, how many how many optional themes should be we be doing? Uh, how do the areas of knowledge uh, relate to each other? How, you know, in other words, how, do, how are we going to teach the, the course? Um, you know, we're meant to get through all of the areas of knowledge. Um, we are meant to do two optional themes. Uh, and of course, we're meant to do the core theme as well. Um, but I, I, you know, since, since I began teaching uh, in this new way, in this, in this question-based way, I've been trying to get away from the kind of shopping list approach um but without sacrificing a kind of depth of of knowledge uh, understanding the kind of fundamentals of each of the different aspects of the course and again i will try and explain how that works um but when it comes to the optional themes for example uh i think the idea of just doing two is slightly ludicrous <laughs> um you know i don't i don't really know how you can not do all of those to be perfectly honest and and in the course that i've created we look at all of the all of the optional themes at some point um, I think language, I couldn't get away with it. It, it kind of it designed itself. Language became probably the, the one that we look at most. Um, technology as well probably um, is, is up there. Um, but but I, I think it's important to look at all of those. Now, you know, uh, when, you, when you see the course, if you're using my course, the whole point of it is that you can adapt it as much as you, as you want. Um, I, I was teaching in Peru, uh, so indigenous societies was a really, really important thing to do for me. I mean, I think it's important everywhere, but particularly um, in, in um, Latin America, it was fantastic to be able to draw on the ideas of indigenous thinkers. So, you know, I, I, and I thought it was very important for my students to know more about it. Um, so I, I, I've, I've built in quite a lot of indigenous um, knowledge as well. I think that's really, really important. It's a lovely way of, uh, of kind of looking at how we, in industrialized large-scale societies approach knowledge as well because you know using that as our as that as our kind of lens to view how we produce knowledge and what we use knowledge for is 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 not only tells us about indigenous societies but it also tells us a lot about ourselves as as, as a society because we have a radically different way of doing all that um all right so so we'll we'll kind of come back to this uh throughout the webinar um i'll refer to it again as i'm as i'm showing you around the site and and how that works uh okay so let, let's have a quick look at the new forms of assessment um so that the essay i think is very very similar to to what it was before um, you know, we, we have the same word count, we have three interactions, we have, you know, the, the, the basic objective, which is to construct clear arguments supported by effective uh, evidence and examples. Um, knowledge questions are still at the core of it, but um, the, the thing that, that people are saying has changed, which I don't really agree with, um, you know, the, the IB have made it clearer that the knowledge question comes from the title. Now that's how you should have already done it anyway. You know, the, the, the IB themselves have said that they've been in the past slightly misleading um, 
about the role of knowledge questions. Uh, you know, very, very much not what you do is, is identify another knowledge question from the title, which is what a lot of students make a mistake about doing. But that, that is much clearer now, I think. So we're definitely not doing it like that. Um, there's a single criterion uh, for marking rather than, um, rather than two. I think there's slightly less guidance in the guide. For example, they don't, they don't, they don't talk about uh, claims and counterclaims as a way of kind of structuring your essay. Um, instead, we are, we are meant to look at uh, different points of view uh, in the essay, which is slightly different from, from claims and counterclaims. Um, I, I've, I've kind of discussed this in quite a lot of detail in, in the other webinar. So if you want more thoughts on that, I mean, by all means, ask me questions, I'll, I'll try and respond to them, but have a look at that other webinar that I did as well, which looks at that in more, in more details. But basically, this is a very, very similar task um, to, to what we are used to, what we've done before. I apologize if you're coming to TOK for the first time, this means nothing to you when I say, well, it's just like what we've always been doing. Um, but yeah, have a, have a look at my other webinar if, if you want more details on that or, or send me some questions. Um, so the, the TOK exhibition uh, is obviously the new thing. Um, you know, all of this I'm sure will be familiar. It's, it's an individual task. Students choose three objects. Um, one question I had, which is probably worth just clarifying from, from someone, they said, can students use the same objects? Definitely not. Um, they, they all have to have different objects. And the idea is that the objects should be quite personal to them. It should mean something to them. It should be something that they have used themselves. Uh, in order to, to understand um, the world, um, not specifically TOK, but you know anything that they've done. Uh, they write a 950 word um, commentary uh, linking these three objects to uh, one, one of the, the, the IA prompts that they have chosen. There are 35 of them in the, in the TOK guide. Um, students can, ha can use the same prompt, um, not the same objects, but they can use the same prompt. That's not a problem. So that's how we kind of personalize these, these exhibitions. Um, and the discussion, the, the ideas should be based within one of the optional themes or the core theme, okay? Um, kind of weirdly, the, the guide says it's strongly recommended. <coughs> so I, you know, I, 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 I think we should take that as this is what you have to do. Don't make sure it's not set within an area of knowledge uh it's got to be it's got to be one of the themes um so that's talk exhibition again um if you want a little more depth and detail on this um then you know check out the other webinar you know what i'm doing today to repeat is is just how we are going to handle this so i will come back to the talk exhibition and how hopefully the s uh, the uh the website will help you with 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 making sense of this and creating great um, tok exhibitions Okay, so here we go. Um, this is the kind of uh, the, the, the main part of what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, so <laughs> I was always confused. I mean, I've been, I've been teaching, teaching TOK since I suppose 2011, 2012. Um, and for the first three or four years, uh, or even more than that, I, was, I, was, I loved it. I loved TOK. Um, I always have. Um, but I was confused as to how to actually teach it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that says about me as a teacher, but uh, I always felt I wasn't quite doing it right. Uh, and, and things kind of came to a head when I, when I started teaching at my, my, my well, I'm, I'm actually still teaching at Newton College in Peru. I'm living in England, I'm teaching in Peru. I think that makes me quite unusual. Um, and I, I work with a fantastic educator, absolutely amazing guy. And, and he, he, he said, you know, these lessons don't quite work. Um, you know, I was head of TOK and he, he would come to me at the beginning of every lesson and say, what are we trying to do here? How does this align to the, to the rest of the course? You know, I don't quite get it. Uh, and so I, I ripped up all my notes and, and I went back to the drawing board and I kind of backward planned um, from the prescribed titles. And I tried to look at what they, uh, that they were looking four and I came up with eight big questions and I arranged all of the all of the all of the my whole course into these eight, eight big questions each one was a was a unit um, and rather than looking at the ways of knowing as they were then and the areas of knowledge separately we focused on answering these big questions and of course knowledge is messy and chaotic and 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 kind of all expansive 
Um, so you require, obviously, more than one area of knowledge, more than one way of knowing to answer these big questions. So it created a very integrated course. Um, we made sure that it was very much driven by the latest real life situations, examples of, of you know, issues and events going on in the world today. And it worked. It was fantastic. And, and this was the answer to all of my problems. And we introduced that uh, in 2017. We, we kind of uh, we, we developed it for a couple of years. You know, I, I obviously I'm an active uh, classroom teacher. Um, so I, I use all of my resources, of course, that's where they, that's where they are developed and it got better and better and better. Um, and now we have, um, we have the new syllabus. Uh, so we've made our biggest changes to the big question framework and we now have six big questions, which I'll show you on the next slide. Um, and what's new for the new syllabus is that I'm now applying these big questions to absolutely everything, um, that we do so the free content on the website as well as all of the members content i'm applying these big questions to the themes as well as the areas of knowledge you will see that the framework is similar to the knowledge framework that the that, that, that uh, the ib recommends i think it's um well because it's question based it's just a little bit easier to 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 um to enter and understand and process um, there are a couple of extra questions that don't really appear on the knowledge framework. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you in the next slide. Um, and, and if you're not familiar with it, you can see how it, how it is very similar to the knowledge framework, but I, I hope slightly more user friendly. Um, so this, this, gives us a, this gives us the opportunity to, to explore all of the areas of knowledge uh, easily. You know, we, 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 we do them, we go back to them, we, we go back to them again. You know, we're, we're looking at them all the time. For every single unit, we, we look at real-life situations and events for all of the areas of knowledge. Um, so students have a, 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 a wide uh, understanding of everything, as well as, I hope, a deep understanding. Uh, we cover the core theme very thoroughly. And we do, um, we do all of the optional themes at some point, you know, one or two of them we only mention in two or three, three lessons, but some of them, you know, we, we do in a lot of detail. Uh, and the way it's now set up, it means that you can, you, if you want to go into more detail for any of the areas of knowledge or any of the themes, you can do that via the, via the website. So these are the questions. Um, so there, there is a question. Uh, I think my, my, my head is probably in the way of the top one. I always make this mistake when I, when I design my presentations for, for um, the webinars. Um, so foundations, what is theory of knowledge and why do we study it? Uh, I won't read them all out. You can see them for yourself. Um, so each big question has a kind of shortened name uh, and it has the question itself. Um, so those, those are the questions that we ask and you will see that um, they, they correspond to the knowledge framework. You know, we've got perspectives there. Um, we've got values there, which, which, which correspond to ethics. Um, foundations is very similar to, to the scope. Um, but we've also got um, something which, which, is mentioned in the, which is mentioned in the new course, uh, SPIN. This is quite an important concept that we're trying to bring into the, to the new syllabus. Um, this is all about the way in which our understanding is affected by how we communicate ideas um, via language or via, via other forms of communication. Um, I, a big question five, creativity. Um, I mean, this, is, this, is, this, is, this also kind of corresponds to scope, I suppose. How is new knowledge created about the world? Um, and then finally, uh, big question six, how do we become discerning knowers? Um, the idea is um, that we do four or five of those questions in the first year and then one or two of them in the final year followed by the essay and then followed by you know um revision for for, for exams if they ever happen again so those are our big questions um and we adapt them as i will show you in a second for all of the areas of knowledge and all of the themes okay that won't make much sense but i will try and show you how that works uh, in a second. Right. Um, so the lessons. Okay. So if you are a member of the site, I hope this doesn't seem like a sales pitch, but it kind of inevitably will because, um, you know, th th this is, uh, th I, I, I want to just explain not just to 
potential people who might want to become members, but to the members out there right now, um, this is what we've created. Okay, so each big question um, forms a unit of 12 different lessons. Uh, within each of those units, we are looking at a range of different areas of knowledge uh, and, and themes um, and the core theme. Um, our lessons are driven by, by um, key concepts, key thinkers, and for me, as a teacher who wants to really get his students engaged, um, real life situations that, that are absolutely up to the minute. Uh, and because we publish the newsletter, uh, you know, every single month I, I find 20 new real life situations and, and publish them and send them out. You know, I'm, I'm, I draw on those inside my, my classroom um, because that's what really gives students uh, a kick. And I think that's the acid test of TOK really, you know, is it relevant to what's going on right now? And of course it is, um, it's fantastically relevant, especially right now with, with what's going on. You know, we've never had more of a TOK moment, I think, than, than, than now, not just the, the, the coronavirus pandemic, but um, Black Lives Matters and, 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 you know, everything that's going on, rewriting of history, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting time. Uh, it's not necessarily a good time, but a very interesting time. Um, so TOK, I think, helps my students make sense of so much of what's going on. Um, so the, 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 the result of that is that, you know, we create these very engaging, very relevant lessons. Um, and most importantly, they are learning about these things within a real, context okay right so i'm gonna i'm gonna come out of the presentation now and i'm gonna i'm gonna start um going on to the website um just to show you how this looks in practice uh so let's let's just um pull up the website um actually i've made a mistake there uh, i think we want to i think we want to actually share um sorry my mistake Right, so uh, I'll go to the website and I'll show you, I'll show you, so here, here we are, here's the website, um, which should be familiar. I've given it a slightly new look, new colors, new designs. Right, so um, there's a lot of content now. Uh, you'll see that the site is now arranged along the 2022 lines. Uh, and by the way, it's 2022, I don't like, calling it 2020. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Southern Hemisphere teacher, albeit one living in the Northern Hemisphere. And us guys in, this, in the Southern Hemisphere are not teaching TOK, in, uh, the new TOK course until 2021. So 2020 is kind of confusing. We will all be doing the essay in 2022. So I think that actually makes it a little bit clearer, or the, the exhibition at least in 20, yeah, 2022. Um, sorry, <laughs> I rant occasionally. Uh, right, so here we, here we have the site. So uh, the members section, um, obviously available just to, to members. So to find the BQ um, lessons, uh, we go into that tab here, um, and we can just click on, the, these are our big questions, um, these are the units. So if we go into big question three, for example, you can see how it's all arranged. Um, this is our question about spin. And my lessons are arranged like this. Um, lots of kind of support material up here. And then we have the lessons down here. So you've got 12 lessons there. Um, giving you, I hope, a, a great experience for this, for this particular lesson. So if we click on one of the lessons, you can see how, how it works. Uh, you are, you know, if you're not aware of what happens here, you are guided through to a, a Google Doc. Um, and this is our lesson for the, the ninth lesson of this particular unit. Um, seeing what we want to see. Uh, this, is, this is largely about confirmation bias. I think if there is any concept uh, that, is, that is absolutely vital in TOK, it's confirmation bias. If we can get over confirmation bias, the world will be a better place. Um, so that's what that's what a lesson looks like. Now I will I will come back to the lesson later on and, and talk a little bit about each of the elements within the lessons. But um, you know the the idea is that you have um, projected this onto your screen. That it's a very well structured lesson with a starter, uh, with little activities for individuals and then groups, um, and then finally an exit task at the end uh, to help you check for understanding just to make sure that your students um, 
have have got it you know the key idea within within the lesson uh, i like post-its um i have my my classroom just literally covered in post-its everywhere and i just read them after they've gone uh and and that's the kind of exit task i'll come back to this in a second uh we also have a slide for every single lesson just showing how the lesson aligns to the syllabus uh, and you might also notice that some of the words here are in red um, these are the 12 key concepts that the ib have identified as being particularly important so you know, we use all of the 12 words throughout the course. So every time you see a word in red, it's one of those key concepts that you can perhaps um, spend a little more time on with your students just to remind them of those, those, um, those words and ideas. So there's another one there, culture. Okay, so um, let's go back to, let's go back to the presentation. Um, so that, that's what the lessons look like. That's where they're found. Um, so, sorry, I'm, I'm playing around here uh right so how does this help us understand the course those those were the lessons that's what members get they get they get um uh they get 72 lessons like that they get a whole lot more as i'll show you in a minute but how can we use the big question framework maybe if we're not members um or maybe if we are members and we want to we want to we want to um establish a little more depth and detail about the areas of knowledge and the different themes um well, we can apply the big question framework to, to everything uh, that we do, okay? And, and all we do here is we adapt the big questions um, for a specific area of knowledge or theme um, and elsewhere on the site that you, you, you will see how we do that. And I'll show you how that, how that works. So if we go back to the, if we go back to the, um, sorry, if we go back to the um, site, Okay, let's say, for example, we want to have a look at language, or you can, I'll, I'll click in here so that you can see everything. So I've arranged the, the two talk themes, so the optional themes and the, and the, um, and the core theme on one page. Um, and let's, so let's go to the optional themes I found here. This is all free content that we're looking at now. Um, so let's look at um, language. Okay, so if we click on language, and you will see um, we've got our six questions. Now you can see how we've adapted it. Okay, so foundations, which is what is theory of knowledge and, and why do we study it, becomes what is language and how essential is an understanding of it. Um, perspectives um, becomes what role does language play in reinforcing our perspectives and biases. Okay, so so you can see how we've changed the we've changed the question for this particular theme. And, and we do the same for, for all aspects of the of the um, of the course. Um, you will see that, you, that there are some discussion points. I've got exploration points and discussion points. The discussion points is is free for everyone to use. Uh, you can just click on that to take you to a Google Doc, and it gives you some some key ideas on language. Uh, you can you can have a look here at uh, something on the way in which language has evolved. That's kind of first order knowledge, but I, I still find it interesting. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit of extra content there. And again, you'll find that for, for all of the themes and the, the areas of knowledge discussion points at the, uh, on the opening page. Um, so if we go into, let's say, big question six, creativity, how does language support us in creating new knowledge? Um, so we look at language via that question, how it develops over time um you get um a few example knowledge questions that align to this particular big question there are loads of quotes there on um on on language and how it develops over time and here's the here's the really important bit um we've got lots of real life situations articles videos podcasts and things on um how language develops over time how we create new knowledge how it helps us to create new knowledge um, and everyone gets that. Um, if you are a member, um, you can access our exploration points. Okay, so I'll just show you the, the document there, what that looks like. And this just helps you process all of the material on that page. Okay, so you get a few questions. Uh, we get some key terms and concepts that, that might be really, really useful for us. Uh, and then there's um, a kind of uh, unpacking, unpacking suggestions for all of the 
media sources that you find on that page. Okay, so that, that's what members get as kind of extra. Um, let, let me come out of there. I'll just show you what the areas of knowledge look like. Um, so let's, let's try natural sciences. So just to, just to remind you what, what this means, this means that if you feel, okay, so I've got these 72 lessons, but I want to go into more detail with my students about the natural sciences. I want, I want more information on that. Um, you can do that. You can do that. Um, you know, foundation points will give you more information on the scope of the natural sciences, why, why they're important. Um, this particular question, well, let's go again to creativity. Which is a big one for the natural sciences. Why doesn't that? What? How? How do we create new knowledge in the natural sciences? How does it develop over time? Um, so again, uh, some knowledge questions there. Lots of quotes, which are you know really great for for getting students into um, an area of knowledge. And again, a lot of uh, real life situations, media sources. Um, and uh, again, if you're a member, um, you can you can access the um actually no that's the wrong that's the wrong one yeah this link uh this is what you get if you remember just to help you just to help your students um if you want i mean this is kind of extra but if you want you can give them these questions you can you can make sure they understand these terms and you can give them this um this the, the, the these unpacking points for each of the media sources okay so there is a huge amount of content uh on the site um and you can use it in, in, in any way you want. This, this is the idea, you know, I, 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 want, I want the site to be as prescriptive as you want it to be. So you can just use all of the lessons as they are. I think they're brilliant. They work very well for me. Or you can completely adapt them. You can, you can spend more time on one area of knowledge. You can, you can, you can focus on a theme. Uh, when they come to do the, um, the exhibition, let's say you have a student who really wants to do technology, you can say, well, go to the, go to the site there, have a look through the discussion points, have a look through the exploration points, have a look at all the media sources. It means that they have a huge resource um, for any aspect uh, of the course, which should enable them to create a great exhibition or a great um, essay. Okay, so um, let's, let's think perhaps a little bit more about um, assessment. Um, so again, how does the big question framework relate to the assessment tasks? Um, I'm not going to bother um, going onto full screen. Uh, so I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a believer in in kind of embedding um, assessment tasks into lessons, um, using lessons to practice individual skills. Uh, so, for example, at the beginning of every single big question unit, um, we I, I get my students to write an, an essay style introduction. At the end of every unit, I get my students to write a, an essay style conclusion. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, 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 we have all of the key concepts there for them to think about. We, we are emphasizing the idea of perspectives within each of the lessons. Um, but, but as well as that, as well as these little tasks that they do, um, they have specific formative um, assessment tasks. Um, so, you know, I, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so if we go again to members, uh, so the six big question framework, um, I've set up a separate page for talk assessment and I'll show you how these are kind of embedded in, in my unit. So for the talk essay, I get, I get my students to write, um, TOK journals. Um, I, that, that's the kind of first, first task to help them understand um, the kind of questions we're interested in asking in TOK, how to use um, evidence from, from what's going on in the real world right now, how to think about perspectives, how to think about significance. Um, so that's what we start with, um, you know, what we are interested in essentially uh, in TOK. Then they do um, a, um, then they do an essay plan. Um, and then they do the final essay. So you can you can see in here that um, you know the, the first one comes in my first unit, then in the third unit, and then in the final unit, uh, we which will be in year two, um, we will be unpacking the prescribed titles. We'll be going over the skills um, that they've already learnt about um, and and recapping uh, how to write a, a TOK essay, how to structure a TOK essay. 
Um, and, and so, you know, it's, it's all laid out there, um, kind of uh, step by step. For the exhibition, um, I, um, I am, I'm suggesting two practice exhibitions. Um, and so th these appear in Big Question 2 and Big Question 4. And I link these exhibition practices to the Big Question. Okay, so their first practice exhibition for me will be related to ethics and values. Okay, so they'll look, they'll look down the list of 35 IA prompts and they will look at the ones that relate to ethics. Okay, um, and they'll base their practice exhibition on that. They'll just choose, well, actually they don't choose, they, they, I give them a selection of exhibition objects. They just choose one as practice and they write, I think it's 250 words for that first um, practice exhibition, which, is a great way of getting them into the process of, of what they will be doing. It also familiarizes them with the, the 35 IA prompts. Um, and it, it, it helps them to understand how to link the real world, i.e. an object, to uh, TOC uh, concepts. Uh, then they do a second exhibition, the second practice exhibition, this time linked to Big Question 4, which is all about perspective. So again, they look at those 35 IA prompts and they see which ones relate to bias and perspectives um, and, and do something very similar. This time they choose their own object. I don't give them a list of options. Um, and they um, just one again, and they write this time 350 words. So slightly longer than the first one. And then they're set up really fantastically well for the final exhibition task, which they do in the fifth unit. Um, I, I give them a few ad pieces of advice, not just on how to create an exhibition, but also how to present their ideas in public, because I think that's, that's a really important skill to have. Um, and there we are, we're done. So, so you know, basically we, we've got two big formative assessment tasks for the essay, two big ones for the exhibition, but we're also building in more help for the final product uh, within the big question unit. So each big question unit has um, support for the assessment tasks. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's let's um, let's let's finish off um, the the kind of BQ framework and what it gives you. Um, so it 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 it, do, it doesn't just give you a range of lessons. It doesn't just give you the means to understand and make sense of the areas of knowledge and the themes. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other things as well that um, that that we've been adding. Um, I am really, really keen on integrating TOK with the rest of the course. As I've said, I think it's the intellectual engine room of the DP. Um, so within every unit, every BQ, um, I have created a faculty presentation which just simply outlines what we'll be looking at, some of the ideas, some of the thinkers um, within that unit. Um, and I've created a, an email that you can send out to the rest of your members of staff. So that, that this will give them the means, give them the instruction uh, to include some TOK in their lessons and help you to deliver the course, because I think that's how it should be done. Um, hopefully get them interested. And this is, the, this is the great thing about using questions as your units, rather than um, saying, right, for the next four or five weeks, we are be, we're going to be looking at mathematics. If you do it via a question, every single teacher can get involved. You know, every single teacher can say how perspectives and biases affect the understanding in biology, in history, in um, English literature, whatever it is. They can all answer that question. They can all answer all of the big questions. You know, how does knowledge in my subject develop over time? Um, you know, they can all they can all answer those questions. So this the, the BQ framework really allows all teachers to get involved in in the delivery of TOK. Um, what's what's brand new for for the 2022 syllabus? I also want to get parents involved. Um, as a parent myself, um, I want to be involved in obviously the education of my children. It's difficult though. It's it's difficult to to um, find a way in. And the older they get, the more difficult it becomes, right? I mean, DP is pretty high level stuff. Uh, I, I don't know how many people can get into physics and, and other, other subjects at that level, mathematics. Um, so I, I, I mean, I think TOK is the perfect course for parents to get involved in. Um, and actually I, I will, I will show you what this looks like. Um, so for parents, I've designed, um, I've designed 
I'll show you what it looks like. Designed hopefully the means for them to get involved. So again, if we go if we go to uh, one of the big questions, let's pick pick uh, number two. Um, all right. So so this one is all about values. This re relates to um, to ethics. So you'll see a little folder here, tier K for parents. Okay. Um, what they get are three little documents. Um, they get a, an email that you can use, okay, which just, it, it just outlines TOK, um, highlights the question that we're on, the, the unit that we're on. Um, they also get the unit outline. The, the, these are something that I, I give to all students as well, so they have a very, very clear idea of where they're going. Uh, so they've got a copy of that, but here's the, the kind of most important thing. I give them a, another little presentation, okay, so it just it just hopefully will get parents involved and and i give them um you know uh, just a, just a, some of the highlights of the of the of the unit okay so i've picked out um six key ideas key thinkers i've tried to pick short videos for them to look at and i hope that you know they will look at that and say wow what a fantastic course it's brilliant that my my child is doing this and i will i will have a look at this and i will get involved in some conversations with them um so they get a little bit of information on the site and and um here are some questions okay um so the, the, these are questions that relate to the profession that they do you know th this this big question is all about values um and these here are some discussion points that maybe they can they can talk to their to their kids about um what are the key values of the job in which you work um, does your profession work towards the betterment of society? We could get in lots of trouble here, but uh, you know there, there, there are some questions um, for them to, to their, for them to ask and, and discuss with their with their um, children. Uh, there's a link to the newsletter because that is I'll, I'll go over the newsletter in a minute, but that's a great way for them to be keeping in touch with what we're doing. Uh, and I'm very very help, happy to to field questions from parents as much as teachers. So. I'd love to get some some questions from them about what we're doing. Okay, so that's how I want to try and get parents involved. I, I don't think there are many resources out there that are designed for parents, but you know, hopefully this will work. Um, self-guided lessons. Uh, every single lesson that I produce, I also produce in a self-guided version, so students can learn autonomously. This is obviously very relevant at the moment with what's going on. Um, a lot of students are having to work at home, distance learning, online learning. It's tough, it's difficult, um, but I have, I've designed some lessons that do that. Um, you can have a look at some samples here, but um, I'll just quickly quick, click on one to show you what these look like. So here, here, are, here are the self-guided versions of, of some lessons. Um, and you can see that you get this uh, self-guided support sheet here. Um, let's have a look at this. So this this is a lesson all about all about uh, how how the natural sciences develop over time. Uh, so they get they get a slightly adapted um, lesson presentation that they read through. A little bit of guidance there on how to use it. They get all of the tasks that are designed for them. To do on their own, but I, you know, you can use breakout rooms with Zoom and get them working together. You know, you can be creative about it. Um, but I've tried to make it as 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 kind of um, as easy to use for them on their own as possible. Um, and if they get stuck, you know, what they're meant to do is create their own document and answer the questions from the presentation. But if they get stuck, they can have a look at the self-guided lesson support. So there's one of these documents for every single lesson that we do um which i know has have been very um favorably received by schools around the world um at the moment because you know of, of, of uh, the the challenge that faces us in teaching at the moment um so those are the self-guided lessons this is what i'm really desperately working on at the moment uh, the 10 minute um tok uh, classes let me just give you a, a quick example of that if i can find one um <clears throat> so i i i've designed a lot of lessons actually i don't think I've, oh yeah here it is uh, there's a there's a link i've designed a lot of lessons that are meant to last just 10 minutes they're really designed for for non-tok teachers um to use um this one is about intuition um 
and uh, well, I, I don't know which subject could use it. Um, but also, you can use you can use these ten minute TOK lessons as alternatives to to the to the BQ lessons. Um, so you know, if if you feel that one of the lessons doesn't quite work for you for your students, then have a look at the the ten minute TOK lessons, which are all within each of the BQ pages, and you can su substitute them. Um, you know, they can easily be expanded, uh, or or you know, they they can just be used as an extra section in your lesson or as a, a replacement section in one of the lessons. So have a look. Again, you'll see that, that we've highlighted the, um, the, the, the concepts that are uh, identified as being really important in TOK responsibility uh, and values there. And again, these are all linked to um, the course. So those are the 10 minute TOK lessons. I, I, I'm committed to, to doing like 10 for every single Big question. So there should be there should be quite a few done by the start of the new academic year. Things are a bit crazy at the moment. It's hard to get things finished, but I'm 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 trying to do that. Um, we are going to overrun, by the way. Um, but remember, I'm sending out a video recording of this webinar. So if you need to go, um, I will send you the video, and you can see the end um, in your own time. Uh, lots and lots of contents pages. Well, contents pages for every single. Um, big question. Uh, it's very important that the students know exactly where they're going, uh, exactly what every single lesson is, is about, the, the, the learning objective, uh, the key ideas. So students, you know, th this is a very conceptual course. Students can get lost very easily, so we need to give them as many um, pieces of support as possible. So they've got loads of support. And for teachers as well, I've created various indexes uh, and schemes of work that you'll find. So it, it should be very, very clear and easy to deliver. Um, I've, I've shown how each lesson is, is linked to the, to the course, the last slide of every lesson demonstration, uh, lesson presentation. So that should be all clear. Okay, um, all right, so the other big thing that we do, the other way in which we are gonna be handling the new course, um, continue to use the TOK newsletter. Um, so the TOK newsletter provides students with, with access, direct access to what's going on in the world right now. 20 stories every month I send out to, to schools around the world. Uh, and these can be used again as alternatives to the, the big question lessons. Um, or you might just wanna have a discussion about something, right, today's lesson is all gonna be about this. Uh, how is it linked to what we're doing? You know, it, it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility and a lot of scope to just do your own thing. Um, and also, the third bullet point there, I I would love to see the newsletter used by other teachers, by non-TOK teachers. I send the newsletter out to to all of my um, members of staff in my school. Um, they they react well to it. Um, I don't know how much they use it, but they send me appreciative email saying thank you very much for sending this. Um, I link each edition of the newsletter to the other courses. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so it is designed to be used by uh, other teachers. Um, members can access, I, I'm being, I'm, I'm giving it, I'm giving the full newsletter to everyone at the moment. I, I mean, there are normally there are two versions. There's kind of the members version and the free version. Um, but because of what's going on at the moment, everyone is getting the free version because I think it's it's helpful at the moment. Um, so this is uh, that we've just got. Sorry, I didn't say this. This is the archive page for the newsletters. Uh, quite a few there now, going all the way back to uh, the beginning of 2015. Um, this is the last edition. Um, so May to June of this year, uh, obviously dominated by. Um, coronavirus but also there's there's the way in which language is being used um, in the, the 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 various protests going on at the moment uh, this is a lovely story about um, an art expert who trains police and and special forces in perception it's it's fantastic it's a really interesting story um, and you can see for yourself you know this is this is how we how we um, how we present the newsletter so you can see in any of these um, you know, there's a, there's a link there in terms of how to integrate um, this story with the rest of the DP, and this is this is what this is what other teachers can use. So this one is quite useful for psychology and philosophy. This one for global politics and actually many of uh, Group Three subjects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's what the newsletter looks like. It's another 
um, strand that you can use to create um, your own personalized course. Okay. Uh, well, this is this is uh, this is my longest ever webinar. We're going to go way over an hour. Um, all right. So so this is <laughs> this is another new thing that we've added or over the last twelve months. Uh, another way of integrating um, TOK with the rest of the DP. Um, this is uh, this is our this is our tool, um, which comprises a folder for every single DP subject. Okay. Um, and it enables, I hope, non-TOK teachers to draw on TOK to any depth they want. They can go full on and, and really get involved, or they can just dip their toes into TOK. Um, the best way of showing you, again, is, is just by demonstrating it. Um, so, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, right, so here we are. Uh, diploma program integration. Um, so it's... It's quite straightforward, this, but it's huge. It's massive, right? So for every single group, um, we've got a range of files and folders. Um, and um, the teachers for every single subject can use these to, to help them deliver TOK. So I've, I've, I've got one here set up. Any, anyone can look at this. Uh, this is the one for anthropology. So if we click in there, you'll see four or five different um, folders, uh, sorry, files. So first of all, there's just like an orientation um, presentation, which just explains how this thing works. And then you've got a banner. This is, this is presented on an A3 sheet. Uh, and this just converts the big questions into the big question for that particular subject. Um, you can see for yourself how that, how that kind of works. Um, and that, that could be it, okay? You could, you could give these out, get them printed out, and, and your teachers are doing TOK. And occasionally they might refer to these big questions, you know, how do we create new knowledge about anthropology? How do our perspectives and biases shape our knowledge of anthropology? You're doing TOK, fantastic. I would love it, obviously, if, if non-TOK uh, teachers went into more detail. Um, so to allow them to do that, kind of it, 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 it gets increasingly more complex. Um, the first, what we call them plugins. The first plugin is is just to help them understand the big questions, the kind of things that they could they could they could discuss and consider. Um, then we've got um, quotes again, quite easy to do. Um, so there are a bunch of quotes from people uh, on anthropology. Uh, again, aligning to the different big questions. Let's get rid of some of these tabs. It's one of my very worst habits: opening millions of tabs. Uh, and then it gets slightly more complex, um, a, a little bit more, um, I don't know, you, you, you need more time and more effort to do this, but I, I've presented a range of, of TED talks um, that's, that teachers can watch with their students, um, which align really, really well to what we do in TOK. Um, and then there's a, there's a huge one here. Um, for media sources, which gives loads and loads of articles, videos, etc., for the subjects. Okay, and so they can they can go into as much detail as they want um, for for TOK, and it really I hope it's it's really massively going to help integrate um, the course with the rest of um, the DP. Um, okay, there's more, there's more, there's more. So here's the knowledge lexicon. This is a bit ridiculous. This has grown enormously. Um, so this is uh, a huge number of keywords and concepts. Um, and rather than just being a simple glossary, which I don't think are that effective, I've given the context for students to understand uh, these words and ideas themselves. Okay, so rather than just giving a definition, I've given them a link to an article in which that idea is discussed. So it looks like this. It's pretty enormous. Um, so I, this is the whole. This is the whole course. It's divided into the themes and the um, and the areas of knowledge. Uh, I've tried to be helpful and identify certain terms that you might want to focus on. So some of them are zeitgeist terms. That I think are particularly um, useful at the moment. Some of them are essential terms uh, that I think all students should know, and some of them are course terms which it might be one of the 12 key concepts it might be an area of knowledge it might be a theme um, 
And so, you know, here, 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 for example, is certainty. Okay. Um, and we can click on this article and we can go to a nice little discussion of skepticism and certainty. Uh, and so rather than just giving a definition of certainty, which it's a word that, 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 that's quite hard to define in 10 words or less anyway, students themselves can see a discussion about certainty and, and, and you know, the, the implications of being certain or being uncertain when it comes to knowledge. Um, so I've, I've done that for a lot of words and ideas. Um, and I've also, I've, I've, but I've rearranged it to make it slightly more manageable. Um, you can, you can click on the, the, the different pages here. So this is the one for the core thing, knowledge and the knower. Um, so we've got, we've got fewer, fewer words there. So we can actually, you know, probably use that one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there are 164 words for that. Still quite a lot. And obviously you'll see words repeated, um, because they can be considered within different contexts. And I've got lots of different, um, you know, some of them are just quotes, some of them are, are articles, some of them are videos, uh, and students themselves can, can, can use that. And again, you can use this to, to create your own kind of course. If you think one word is particularly important, one idea maybe you feel is not covered in enough detail in the, in the, um, in the big question lessons, go to the lexicon, uh, find some articles that, you, that, that, that cover it, and you can give that to your students. So, you know, it's totally um, adaptable. Right, going back, we're nearly there. We are there. We're kind of there. You can go now. <laughs> Um, I, I just wanted to mention, now that we have um, made the effort to come back to Europe, which was no easy feat, um, I'm very happy to be back, very close to my family again. Um, but the other, the upside as well, is that I am now far more available for school visits. Um, and I, I love doing school visits. I love talking to non-TOK teachers. I love talking to TOK teachers. And I love, above all, talking to students. Um, I, I, I think the, the two words that summarize what I do in schools is that I, I give passion, I give purpose. I, 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 I help students to love TOK. I help teachers, I hope, to, to love TOK. But I also give them a sense of purpose, why we are doing this course, why it's so important. Um, you can find out more details on the, on the website. I, I won't do a kind of sales pitch here, but this is something that I, I will be doing a lot more of. So I would love to hear you if you want to um, develop your department, get in some outside speakers um, to, to, to give more awareness of why we're doing this amazing course. So you can, you can check out the website for that. Um, finally, uh, how do you join us? So if you're not a member already, how do you join um, the site? It's very, very easy. You just head to the site. Um, you go to this page here um full access top membership or just click on the members um tab there are different options for membership uh i i obviously heartily recommend having access to everything on the site and the newsletter but if you just want the newsletter you can you can be a newsletter member if you just want the the big question um lessons you can be a, a member of that um so it, it's up to you there are four different membership options uh you click on one of those and um, you can get set up in, in just a few seconds. Okay, it's very, very easy. I'm already a member apparently, so that's good news. Um, so that's it, that's it. I have a few questions that have come in. I'm gonna have a look at those now. Um, if you have any other questions, then please send them my way. Uh, I, will be, I will be sending out the debrief for this presentation very shortly. I'll include a link to the video. Um, I'll include the presentation itself. Um, so you should have easy access to everything that we've talked about today. I hope, I hope that this wasn't too much of a sales pitch. I hope that I did kind of deal with the, with the new course, but if you feel I didn't, um, have a look at the other free uh, webinar that I did on the new course. Have a look at the webinar on the two new assessments and you'll find a lot more detail and information there, I think, on the course. But today's webinar, I hope, helped you to, to um, kind of orientate yourself in terms of how the site will help you to deliver a fantastic TOK course. So thank you very much for, for joining me. Um, I look forward to, to seeing you again in future webinars and I will, I will shortly be announcing more webinars um, about various different things. Many thanks for joining us. 
uh, and uh, have a great day. Goodbye.